Everywhere you turn, people are going to tell you that trans fats are bad. But I want to explain to you in this video why they're wrong. Now, I'm not saying that industrial trans fats are good. In fact, they're far from that. Those truly are bad. But there is a whole different world of trans fats that fall under the umbrella of the term trans fats that I feel like we need to understand. And I'm going to help you learn that process. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't already, please make sure you turn on notifications so you can see whenever I go live, you see whenever I'm doing live seminars, but you can also make sure that you never miss one of my videos ever. All right, so let's get down to this. Trans fats are simple. All trans fats are, are fats that have ultimately been modified to become more hydrogenated. What that means is a fat that is a liquid has gone through a process, either natural or artificial, to become more solid. And in the world of shelf stability, it's very, very common to take a fat and make it much more stable by hydrogenating it. Now, what we have to understand is the stability of fats before we can ever understand a natural trans fat and an artificial trans fat. Because if you stick with me through the entirety of this video, I'm going to give you some research that breaks down that naturally occurring trans fats are actually very good. It's just the artificial trans fats that we have to be aware of. And the science is pretty earth shattering. So first off, the stability of fats. When we look at a fat, we have polyunsaturated, we have monounsaturated, and we have saturated fats. All that means is that some fats are liquid and have more open bonds, and some fats are saturated, which means they're solid at room temperature and they don't have any open bonds. That's why they're all close together, compacted, and saturated. It's that simple. So the whole idea is one that is polyunsaturated or more liquid is much less likely to be stable when put on a shelf, whereas a saturated fat is a lot more stable when it's on a shelf. So the whole idea of making a food saturated or hydrogenating it was actually totally good intention. It was totally coming from a good place. It was designed to take an unstable fat and inject hydrogen into the process to ultimately make it more shelf stable. We were trying to do a good thing. But what people and scientists didn't realize back then was that we lacked the enzymes to break down those trans fats, therefore leaving remnants of those fats floating around through our system for long periods of time. So now that you know what the stability of fats really is, let's talk about the hydrogenation process from an artificial standpoint. So here's what happens. They take a fat, okay, normally an oil, like a vegetable oil, a soybean oil, or something like that. If you look on the label of something, you might see partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Okay, what they do is they heat it to a very, very high temperature, and then they pass hydrogen through it. And what happens is when it's heated to a high temperature, in the absence of oxygen, the hydrogen comes in and it occupies the space where the oxygen normally would. So basically what they're doing is they're taking what would normally potentially be ruined by oxygen and they're plugging a hydrogen in. Oxygen in this case is bad, hydrogen is good. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to heat the fat and plug the hydrogen in, since hydrogen is safe, and make it so that the oxygen can't get in instead. If it were to happen slowly and not in a controlled environment, the oxygen would come in and make the fat bad. So take a donut, for example, like maybe a 7-Eleven or convenience store donut, the really tasty ones in the little pack. Okay, If you look at the label of them, you'll see some partially hydrogenated fats in there. So they cook the donut, they put it in oil, but then they realize that, shoot, we can't put this on the shelf for very long because that oil is going to go rancid. So they partially hydrogenate it. They inject hydrogen into the process so that it doesn't go bad. It doesn't go bad from good old-fashioned natural oxygen. There we have the artificial hydrogenation process. Our body just can't break it down very well. That's the biggest problem. But there's another side to the coin. You see, there is a natural hydrogenation process that occurs inside our bodies. These natural trans fats are known as ruminant fats. And although we don't get a whole lot of them from the diet, they're actually very, very powerful. And research is showing that they're more than just powerful. They're exceptionally beneficial to reducing the risk of heart disease and diabetes. You see, just like we artificially add hydrogen to fats to go through a hydrogenation process in a lab or in any kind of industrial setting, it actually happens in the body too, but only in specific creatures. You see, in cows, they have multiple stomachs. The first stomach, known as the rumen, is where this process occurs. A fat comes in and something called biohydrogenation occurs, where bacteria reacts with the fat and creates heat, and therefore hydrogen gets added into the fat. So yeah, believe it or not, cows have the ability to create their own trans fat through a natural process utilizing bacteria. What's wild is that these natural trans fats respond totally different in our bodies than artificial ones do. And a lot of it has to do with enzymes, it has to do with bacteria. But the two most common natural trans fats are known as vaccinic acid, and you've probably heard of this one, conjugated linoleic acid, which is making a huge impact in the supplement world right now, simply because of all its anti-inflammatory and even its potential anti-cancer properties. 
So the biological process of hydrogenation is actually quite healthy. And here's a study that really backs up what is going on and why it makes such a big difference. This study was published by the Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Sciences out of the University of Alberta in Canada. And what it did is it took a look at vaccinic acid, one of the most prevalent natural trans fats. And it took a look at subjects that were going to consume vaccinic acid for three weeks versus vaccinic acid for 16 weeks. And then they give them an enriched diet that had a little bit more of this vaccinic acid than would normally be present. And what they found is after an extended period of time of consuming these natural trans fats, the risk of heart disease and diabetes and other metabolic disorders dramatically was reduced. Why? Well, scientists found that it had something to do with what are known as chylomicrons. And chylomicrons are starting to make a bigger impact in the world of fat research right now anyway. But chylomicrons are small particles of fat that never get digested. They're small enough to get into the bloodstream, but not small enough to be broken down into the fatty acids that we need to actually utilize to create good solid energy through what's called beta oxidation. So in short, we're left with these partially digested chunks of fat that truly can contribute to plaque. You see, it's less about the LDL, the HDL, and all that nonsense, and more about the chylomicrons, the particles of fat combined with inflammation through an unhealthy lifestyle that truly leads to coronary artery disease and some of these other issues that we're facing. So it's not just about the cholesterol and what you hear and all the saturated fats. It's about how we actually process things. And natural trans fats that are biohydrogenated have some of the bacterial component to help break down those chylomicrons or at least reduce the impact of them. So now you have an understanding of trans fats. You have an understanding that the partially hydrogenated fats that you see on a label are completely different than some of the trans fats you might get from a healthier organic grass-fed meat source. So I hope that this clears some things up and that you're now armed with the knowledge to make the right decisions for your healthy lifestyle. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.